Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. Well, today, as many know, is holiday in the US, so we shouldn't expect any huge activity today. Even we had some bigger activity, for example, flow activity over the weekend, something that's absolutely unusual. We remember 2021 those open the night scam pumps created with tether where tether friday evening just minted 1.5 billion for example and then close afterwards the bitcoin price pushed up up only you remember well i don't know but it feels like a deja vu even i know it's absolutely different the CEO of CryptoQuant just mentioned something like, hey, they spent four billions in futures to push up the price. Wow, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Um, I guess it's not the same like those four billions that Silvergate just received last week, or was it the week before? I don't know. But eh, numbers, always only numbers. <laughs> However, um, I'm I'm still in the same position. It's hard to say that. It's really hard to say that. I mean, we had a main pocket in 19.2. Uh, we break. We didn't break. We walked away. We walked through the 19.2. I remember we spent two weeks there just to break it to the downside because they were distributing all the time and then they just break it and we went down to 15600 you remember maybe no this time was absolutely different no resistance nothing happened there they just walked through the 192 and that's something that's absolutely not acceptable because it's you know if you break such a huge volume level at least you need to retest it. So my expectations here is we will go down back to 19.2 and then we need to see. We also have created the CME gap um, because it closed uh, Friday. I don't remember, 19.5, 19.3 or something. So we have a gap there. It's, uh, you know, and it usually we go then afterwards down anyway to close this gap and then we need to see if bulls are still big in the business and want to go up. It's absolutely funny to read now tweets like up only you missed it. Yeah, Inspo missed it because Inspo has some principles. I don't trade based on beers i don't trade b um, based on price action they they can really they can push it up with futures to 1 million each bitcoin and i will congratulate you if you um became billionaire because of that but i'm not going to do it because you know if i stop to trade with my principles i can stop to trade at all so it is as many parts in life you know certain rules and only if you can keep these rules um you will go further otherwise you will stop you can adjust adapt of course but the current situation doesn't look like i don't i, I need to adapt to something uh, for me it's still a fake rally it's I don't know if that's an exit pump, whatever. It doesn't look really like up only bullish to the moon and whatever. I really don't think so because also nothing has changed. On SPY, SPX, the Gamma Wallet 400 on SPY and SPX 4000 is still intact. And they retraced after they hit it, uh, the 4000 on SPX 
Friday again. So my expectation is next is down. I know even I don't care about indicators like RSI. Many are saying, hey, even on daily, we are so overbought that a retrace is not, um, you know, it's everyone can expect that we will go down. But I don't care that much about 200 MA or uh, RSI, as many of you know. For me, the only thing that counts is flow activity and certain other like futures, funding rate, option trading, mm, walls on uh, based on centralized exchanges and so on and so forth. So it seems what they did is to push up very hard the whole market with a lot of money based on future trading and of course supported by spot. But if you are going long with your Bitcoins, for example, to generate even more Bitcoins, it's not a bad idea. The problem here is uh, we didn't see any huge stable coins coming into centralized exchanges. Um, the net flow was almost um, neutral because they reacted to distribution. So that's uh, something that's looking a little bit strange and we will see um, what is going to happen next. Let us check and make it short today because I don't think we will see a lot of different stuff. Well, first of all, the weights ratio 30 days moving average uh, was bouncing and now it's even above of our um, last former level. So at 27% right now, once again, it went up after it went up, they started uh, with the sell pressure once again. And, you know, so I I really, uh, the weights are still, they keep sending Bitcoins to centralized exchanges and the whole thing doesn't look like we are going to start a bull run, a big rally, how many are expecting uh, I don't know if that's the local top at the moment. I can't tell you that because of course we have a bigger resistance here and only if we break this one we can even go much higher, hitting 28 for example. But if they do that without any kind of retest, any, I, I have checked market maker entities, any huge accumulation. So um, the only guys who are accumulating are those with 10 to 100 bitcoins and they are accumulating even at all time high 69,000. So I wouldn't say they have the perfect uh, trade behavior and enough power to drive the market. So also they have 19,000 uh, wallets um, related to these entities. So also in such case it's really hard to coordinate any kind of operation with so many different actors involved in such an entity. It's a different thing with those entities, for example, with 1000 to 10,000 Bitcoins, the market maker, I've checked them, they didn't um, uh, increase their balances, but they have received some Bitcoins from different entities. We will talk about that later on. Well, let us go forward and see what they are doing. Well, as mentioned here, it doesn't look good at all based on weights ratio. It keeps going up, 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 and that's usually nothing good. And it should indicate that uh, weights want still to distribute more. If we check the weights ratio 30 hours moving average and what they are doing in general, we can see nothing has changed. Unfortunately, they are still doing exactly the same. They are sending more Bitcoins to centralized exchanges, but at the same time, they let the price go up and they are distributing here um, as much as they can, it seems, because we can see they let the price go up, they let the price go up, and then they go directly to 90 to 100%, indicating they are completely 
selling, 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 selling. The question is, why here? Why not at 30k, for example? Also interesting, miners have sent almost 5,000 bitcoins over the weekend. Um, or at least they sent 5,000 bitcoins to centralized exchanges. I don't know if they are done with their sell operations, but also here you remember when miners sold afterwards we went down indicating it's the local top we will see if that's going to happen once again markets only works with money and one part of their liquidity is based on stable coins that's where we were in november that's our peak in december and we are here yeah does that look that's just related to spot so indicating the spot market it's not doing anything, absolutely nothing big, nothing have changed here. But it seems that the, um, everything related to futures is mooning at the moment. Or at least it did. Um, we went with the weights ratio, 30 hours moving average up to 83. Then we de retraced once again. So afterwards we um the the weights ratio 30 hours moving average went down to 80 bounce and it seems it wants to go up we will see how far but at the moment they are really letting the price go up as soon as they see hey some demand is coming in or someone wants to push up the price even more they will allow it just to sell in upper levels even here we can see um that the inflow um is let us check I, I i think i need here yeah so it's better you can see that the uh, net flow is even of course more at the moment uh, we had here 3500 bitcoins uh negative indicating more outflows than inflows 3000 bitcoins here inflow so we received more uh, we had here 2,000 bitcoins we received afterwards, uh, 1,900 bitcoins outflows and net flow. That's just the net flow. And then here another 1,800 bitcoins uh, net flow, negative net flow, indicating that they um, yeah, just bought or at least they um, just took them out from the exchanges afterwards. Let us go forward. So then let us talk about what is happening to the flow activity. And as just mentioned, uh, it was really big. I mean, Saturday, that was the 14th. We received a lot of flow activity in the midnight. Close afterwards, we received 4,680 Bitcoins on weekend. Since when? I mean, yeah, we had that in the past, but that was in January, February, March, April, June, July last year. And even before, in, in, in December, for example, 2021. But since then, never ever again happened. It's absolutely uncommon to see such big flow activity on weekends on Saturday and we will check, but it seems it was related to um, also to miners. Um, but just also just before you can see what they did. The price started to lift up here and also the flow activity started to lift up. It's exactly very um, accurate the correlation between both. Also could be an indication that was an exit pump because they are noticing that even at 15, 16,000, the demand wasn't big. FOMO brings new clients or at least those who were waiting uh, with big bags or at least with some Bitcoins in their bags with fear, should I sell now or shouldn't? And for them, of course, it looks now much better. I have, and you maybe uh, rem remember uh, when I said I wouldn't sell my Bitcoins here. I wouldn't sell because the opportunity is bigger than the risk. If you are, for example, 
um, and a long-term investor. And that's something I'm still saying it. I mean, well, at 21,000, maybe I would sell at least part of my, my bag uh, to rebuy lower because I still think we will go lower. However, let us go forward and check what's happening here. So we received a lot. We are talking about um, 4,700 Bitcoins here and then 1,300, another 2,500 here. So we received just in one day, let us check, that was over 20,000 Bitcoins, if I'm right. Uh, no, almost 20,000 on Saturday. That, that's crazy. I mean, Friday was with 24,000 Bitcoins the first time since uh, mid of December. Uh, we received 22,000. This time was 24,000. And if we check 24,000, the last time we received 24,000 was November 16th. And now you could say, well, nothing happened at that price. Nothing happened. Because, you know, you need less money to absorb more. That's what I said many times in, in the past. So they need much more volume to push uh, down the price. Now we are getting in a price level where it makes more sense. And when you see, for example, in just two days, almost 44,000 Bitcoins coming in. Hmm. But of course, they also, um, we received 24,096 Bitcoins. We had then a withdrawal of 23,800, for example. And the day after, we received almost 20,000 and we had withdrawal almost 19,000 and so on and so forth. So we are seeing once again that the net flow is at least for the weekend it was much more in favor of inflows than outflows also once again indicating they are in such kind preparation also confirmed um, by the wealth ratio well let us take a look here we can see uh, you don't see the red line but you can see it's absolutely identical um, because that's what's happening i mean we had um, Friday, a more in outflow than inflow in stablecoins. We had Saturday, we had more outflow than inflow in stablecoins. And so on and so forth, indicating they are just selling. They are selling and of course we have buyers. If we wouldn't have buyers, the price would just dump to zero. Um, but they are just reacting once again they are using the situation uh, with such an artificial demand so they can distribute even more at a higher price at the moment also here we have much more we don't have any kind of stable coins coming in but they are still distributing 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 that's why the price is declining but we still have demand. We still have people who are buying. So let us go forward. So we can see here um, the open interest, absolute unchanged. As you can see, that's the aggregated one. Leverage ratio declined and funding rate is declining. It was all the time it went up, then down, then up, and now it's declining. Um, however, um, that's something, I don't know what kind of open interest they are using on CryptoFund, to be honest, because, um, yeah, uh, we have here something like, let me check. It's indicating here almost 6.7 billion open interest. It's a lot. It's really a lot. Uh, the question is, where is all this coming from? Uh, because we know that Binance has almost 1.8 billion or something and something we need to check uh, afterwards. But 
I don't know. Uh, to be honest, sometimes uh, it's not clear to me if that's not even too big. But however, let us work with that because that's what we are doing since a while. Open interest lifted up. We will see it didn't lift up that hard. What we have seen was a huge, I mean, really, really huge dump in open interest from 6.6 .6 billion. That was um, January 12th. It went down to 2.8 billion and afterwards it went up by 4 billion. So I don't know exactly what happened there. Um, and that's it seems what the CryptoQuant CEO was um, telling us that someone pushed the whole market with 4 billion in in futures but what happened here with the pump uh, with the dump and pump and open interest it's absolutely not clear to me not yet if we check that here if we check the stable coins related to um um to the um um the relative exchanges we can see we received a lot of longs here um, that was close um before the session closed friday and afterwards they pushed up very hard from uh, mm -hmm. that was 19800 uh up to almost 21400 unbelievable a uh, really unbelievable um at the same time we received for example here almost 9000 bitcoins uh even more wait uh, 6 6 11 12 12,000 Bitcoins on the top while afterwards the open interest uh, the funding rate started to decline it was absolutely high and afterwards it declined a lot so also something we should have in mind and be extremely careful with that uh, so you can see that the open interest started to lift up had this pump and dump and that's not really clear to me what happened there to be honest so let us go forward we can see here and that's something i have shared today on a tweet because so many said the market is overshorted and it wasn't the case it wasn't absolutely the case but <laughs> the case is and it's uh, demonstrating it it's over longed absolutely over longed we didn't dump afterwards we just retrace a little bit and they liquidated a lot of longs just with a really tiny retrace. So um, since January 12th, we have there liquidated 1,850 Bitcoins and shorts, but 1,000 uh, 1, Bitcoins and longs. Incredible. The day after, that was January 13th, we liquidated 2,200 Bitcoins and shorts and only 400 Bitcoins and longs. Then Saturday, we liquidated 4,000. So Friday night um, after the session closed um, until Saturday, 4,430 Bitcoins and shorts and 1,650 Bitcoins and longs. That's <laughs> insane. And right now uh, they are liquidating more longs than shorts, 380 to 290, but not a big delta at all. And once again, we can see they pushed up very hard with the open interest from here um, up to here. And now it's declining. Leverage ratio is declining a lot and the funding rate is up 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 that's the only thing that's happening and up only is the funding rate usually something it should make us extremely bearish because then it means we will go down but of course we need to check the kingfish as well on binance um if we zoom out a little bit also very strange what they are doing there open interest lifted up declined afterwards and leverage ratio declined very hard also here for example we had a pump in dump instead in the funding rate um 
So yeah, maintains positive, still indicating they are demanding more longs, still longing, longing because up only mooning, we will see 100k until end of the month, like they said in 2021, end of the year, like they said in 2022, end of the year, and we are still waiting, I guess, at least this year it should happen, or not? We will see. So let us go forward. Um, Bitmax, let us see how much. Yeah, they have almost 2 billions. And when we are talking about 6.6 .6 billions, means we have a gap of um, 4.6 billions. Um, so, I mean, it's the aggregated view. I don't know how many. Uh, open or how much open interest the other exchanges have to be honest I mean we have here uh, four four five four five including Bitfinex well yeah it's possible then it's possible so what we see Bitfinex didn't anything related shorts longs are still very high the same here related to Bitfinex however if we check for example Binance 46 to 54 or 49 to 51 uh, once again indicating ethereum looks in my opinion healthier um, on binance they are um, just shorting more that's something that also well even the funding rate is indicating is pushing up indicating they are demanding more longs but that's a balance so it seems this um, longs should go up more in the near future let us take a look to the uh, can i spend ah not today so let us take a look what's happening here now <laughs> we have 210 million in liquidations and uh, potential liquidation and the biggest cluster is at 17400 with 200 millions in liquidation indicating Someone is really here uh, longing, well, I wouldn't say high leverage, between high and mid leverage, something between 10 and 15 or something. On the short side, uh, they need to go much more up, otherwise a little bit more to 25,000, I mean a little bit, <laughs> it's $4,000 away, but however. Let us take a look to the high leverage ones. High leverage positions, where are there? So high leverage positions, we need to go up more hitting 21K. Otherwise we need to go, yeah, even more 21,130. Um, I can imagine even to go to 21,200 before we go down um, just to liquidate all of them and low leverage, less high levers, less high levers. What does that mean? Well, it's not loading the map anyway. No, it doesn't look like, okay. Uh, low leverage, we can check Le low leverage. No, we can't check anything more now because it's not allowing it. Let me show low leverage. And yeah, so low leverage, we still have a lot of shorters with low leverage until 20,500 and also here 120 millions so we can even go higher if they want to liquidate all of them you remember when I said well we have shorts but they need to push up very hard hitting 20 they did it <laughs> they really did it something I would never expect but they did it so let us go forward So let us now talk about who or what is driving in the market right now. We can see what Binance is doing. They were distributing all the time. 
um, the last data we have is from mid of December and they distributed even more well not not really more yeah yeah more even more than before so they use the pump to distribute more you can see the angle they started to wait the price started to go up instead they were distributing more and more and more we have the aggregated one that looks different so if we check for example from here we can check this part here that uh, could be extremely helpful so we can say that they start to push up from here and now we can see what they are doing so first of all they distributed from minus 19 to right now minus 37 uh, almost 18,000 bitcoins market traders at the same time we can see uh, from minus 32 to minus 18 we are talking about 14,000 so the aggregate is indicating they pushed up with 14,000 bitcoins more in CBD so it's still less than what Binance distributed but what's really huge is what happened here we can see related to stable coins they pushed up with almost let me check 120,000 bitcoins and almost 600 millions in USD that's really big and conf is confirming a little bit what uh, the CEO of uh, CryptoQuant was indicating that was mostly uh, driven by futures and supported by spot while Binance using the opportunity. Let us go forward and check what the others are doing. Let me see what these guys are doing, for example. So that's Bitfinex. Bitfinex not doing anything um, so it distributed here then they pushed up and now it seems are distributing but we are not talking about huge volume as usual so let me check what was that from starting December 13th December 13th and we do that here as well December 13th so that's going to be yeah so also here for example kraken pushed up pushed up almost if we take a look from 163 to uh, 1800 1700 bitcoins not big at all but big enough to push the price as they did we go forward that's bybit what is bybit doing also here 30th yeah so they for example um yeah they they supported the price action and are uh, right now just um distributing market traders selling at the moment here we go forward that's coinbase i guess it's only up mm. so also here we can see uh we started here at minus 4,000 and we are at minus 1,600 let us say 2,000 bitcoins of course they distributed more and then they pushed up so from here it would be minus 7,000 to minus yeah almost four and a half thousand bitcoins and right now distributing but nothing big so absolutely nothing big almost 600 bitcoins so we need to check and wait so let us go forward what we can see here bitstamp as we know up only from 1600 to currently yeah 5000 bitcoins up we can go forward and check for what gimini is doing gimini pushed up then when everyone was pushing up very hard they started to distribute also very interesting that looks like institutional 
um, because of the timing where they started to distribute. That looks extremely interesting. When people are saying, yeah, but it's market trading. Yeah, market trading. That's what algorithm are using mostly. They can uh, place orders or they are making market trades. And it's very interesting that their algo algos were triggered at 18,200. Very interesting. While they um, both at 16.8. So let us go forward. Entities. What are entities doing? Well, first of all, retailers declining a little bit, but nothing big. These guys here, yeah, they are reducing wallets and the entity or balances. Not really clear. These guys pushed up, now down, but uh, th these guys are the only ones where I would say they accumulated. They accumulated, they started to accumulate in June. The only problem I have here, they started to accumulate in mid of June and they even accumulated at the ultimate high. As you can see, they pushed, 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 declined a little bit, pushed even more up and then started to decline. Doesn't make sense to buy the top and to sell the, the lower areas. Uh, and now, of course, pushing up more and more. But also, once again, it seems we are shifting from such kind of institutional demand to retailer demand or small weights demand, something like because we are talking about wallets with 10 to 100 Bitcoin. So every wallet that has more than 10 Bitcoins, 10.01, shifts to this entity here. And then we are talking about 160,000, well, right now $200,000. I wouldn't say that's a big weight. It isn't. It's a tiny one. But however, these guys started to push up very interesting because these guys usually they are also not the best in trade behavior because also you can see they have they started to buy to accumulate very big at 40k so and i mean they even distributed uh, below but they are maintaining because they are for them it doesn't make any sense to sell here because they will make a big big loss um, so they are maintaining however it's not the hugest entity then we go to the market maker entity and the market maker entity I have checked them um, they have received some new wallets from uh, those guys here and they received also from this year. We just have few, not, not, no, I have to check to be honest. Uh, right now I did my screenshots here, so I need to check. Yeah, we had 109 wallets involved here and they reduced it by one wallet. So the market maker entity received one wallet from here and these guys have usually 10,000 to 100,000 Bitcoins. And once uh, removed or it shifted just here, so they have less uh, balances. As you can see, they declined while these received some. At the same time, we received from these guys here, it seems, let me check. It was uh, 32 two wallets. But the most interesting part is that these guys had just Friday 14,131 wallets involved. 14,131. Today, 14,164. So 33, 30, 30 wallets more, indicating that even that tiny or small whales are buying. Small whales are buying while big whales are unloading. That's what's happening. So as long big whales are not dumping, everything is fine. But 
when they start, when they want, for example, buy the next dip, they will dump the price. And that's where it's going to get very exciting because um, we will see what little weights will do and retailers then afterwards. So if we go forward, we can check that market maker entity were sending bitcoins and bitcoins to centralized exchanges. We can see that here, for example, it takes a little bit. And they sent here 2,500, here 1,000 bitcoins, here another 930, 490, 1,600, 1,500 and so on and so forth so that's also indicating they are using that to distribute and that's not new because they were distributing since we have started to lift up we have started here to lift up they sent for example here 2400 another 2000 bitcoins here and that's relatively big for them um Bitcoin reserves on centralized exchanges are almost unchanged, declined a little bit, but nothing big. The market activity declining, nothing new. Um, also here, nothing new, even OTC. So everything related to OTC, once again, OTC, very active afterwards price went down. Also here, for example, very active after price, price goes down now they are the activity is lifting up so i guess the next retrace will happen soon while centralized exchanges the activity is declining as mentioned uh miners that's what they did miners um from here started to mine received a lot of bitcoins and afterwards just on saturday uh, that was let me check. Yeah, 13th to 14th. So <laughs> it's really strange because like they knew that's going to be, it seems, the local top. And they uh, sent all these 5,000 Bitcoins directly, it seems, to centralized exchanges. And they dumped that. That's it for me. Let's just go forward.